All right, guys, we're back at it again with another interview. Here I'm joined with Lord Hate, a band all the way over from India. Can I have you guys introduce yourselves and tell me what you guys do? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Hate from Lord Hate. Uh, I produce all the music. I help direct a lot of the visuals as well. And that's pretty, pretty much what I do with the whole thing. Very cool. And I am Naimish, and I play guitar in a band, Lord Hate. Nice. Happy to have you guys on and... Like I said, you guys are all the way from India. Like, what's what's that like? What's the music scene over there look like? Basically, what what goes on over there? It's pretty much non-existent, unfortunately. Uh, so we're not even from like the tier one or like the big cities. So the big cities are Mumbai, Delhi, like the kind of names that you might have heard before. Mm-hmm. But we're not from like the big, super big cities. Uh, some of those cities have like some form of music scene or like a metal scene or like an alternative scene. You might have heard. Some or bands like uh, Bloody Wood or Sky Harbor, some few names like that. Yes. The place where we come from, uh, there haven't been a lot of metal movements. So it's literally, uh, it's basically selling uh, fridges to Eskimos out here. But like, we're not dealing with the right target audience. Wow. But it's sort of like a fun challenge, to be honest. Whenever we play live out here, like people are so oblivious to the kind of music that we're making that whenever we play something wild, they don't they just don't know how to react and a lot of times they're just happy to listen to something that they were never exposed to so we get like strange but like mostly positive reactions out there even though it might not be the thing that they are sort of used to okay that's interesting man wow and and like how did you guys come together like how did you guys meet and you know decide you wanted to form this project Naimish actually was in like a competitor band out here he used to be in like a punk band so I had written like a bunch of music, like a lot of music, and I wanted uh, someone to play live with. And the bands that I, and the members that I currently, or like proudly had, they didn't have like any stage presence. They just like went up to stage and they just did this. And I was like, I need someone who can do the songs justice, at least in the live format. So I write all the music, but uh, I need really, really good live bandmates. And Naimish was playing in a rival band and I saw him play live once and I was like, dude, it would be a really fun thing to get him into the band, you know? And he plays really tight. Like his rhythms are like extremely tight. So I was like, dude, I need... I can give you the band. Awesome. I actually scrolled through your Instagram. I did see you, uh, some of your covers, actually. I thought they were pretty good. So I could see why you got him in. Yeah. Never shot some ex bandmate P as well that he left the band and he straight up joined my band. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I left the band and I straight up, you know, message Heath right on the other day and telling him that, um, are you up to any music making or any live shows? He said, come up to my place. Let's Let's discuss. That's how we met right after i left my band i think it was kind of faded to happen <laughs> yeah and uh so you guys just released a new single very recently it's called shut your face uh tell me how how'd you guys go about producing that and you know kind of how the song came about uh so i was playing a lot of this game called doom eternal like the new dlc had just came out like two years ago something like that and i was like really hooked on to it uh, i was finishing and i've been a fan of the guy called mick gordon who has been making you might be familiar with him as well Oh, he has yeah. been the guy behind the Doom soundtracks. Yep. So I was like, you know what? I want to make something which is this heavy. So I just laid down like an instrumental track uh, with that. And later on, uh, I was listening to a lot of Limb Biscuit, just like for the shits and giggles. Awesome. And <laughs> we had already written like four or five songs, which were like super serious. And they were like super lyrically amazing. And then I was listening to Limb Biscuit, And I was like, you know what? I need something that is tongue on cheek. But I don't want to just like straight up rip off Limb Biscuit. So I took like the super heavy track that I wrote for the Doom soundtrack. And then I just like mixed the whole Limb Biscuit vibes to it. And we just tried to make it like super self-aware and that sort of thing. And Dude, make like an own spin on the entire thing. You saying that just confirms my thoughts. That's exactly what I was thinking of when <laughs> I was listening to it. I was just like, yeah, it does sound like a good blend of both Doom and like Limp Biscuit. It does have that new metal kind of style in it. I totally hear it, man. Yeah. What about the video and stuff? Like, do you need like permits yeah. and stuff to to film, or you just go around with a camera and kind of wish for the best? So I've been like producing videos since a while because again, like the place where we are from, 
no one makes metal and no one knows how to shoot like a rock video. Uh-huh. So we were shooting videos for other bands for us. But later on, we came across the guys from House of Protection. So they came over to India. They sort of hired my video production company to get their video for Pulling Teeth done. Uh-huh. And during that process, they I, I was showing them my music. I was like, give me some insight on that. The four songs that I talked about priorly, the dark ones with the super serious material like Bad Omen sort of-esque. Uh, but Stephen, out of House of Protection, he was like, this is pretty good. But he wanted to see us also adopt and basically accept the identity that we come from. Like, he was like, use some Indian elements. And that talk really struck me in the heart in like a very, very good way, which re- it really motivated me. And Naimish as well. My entire team, like the other bandmates and the director and everyone, they were like, he's sort of like, we are not supposed to chase and be something that we are not. Let's just adopt some, at least some clues and some things from the place that we come from. So I was like, okay, uh, since it's not a super serious song, we can actually go a bit more bonkers and just make it a bit more tongue-in-cheek than what it is. And I was talking to someone that I was dating for a while, just for as a joke. I literally said, I'm going to play guitar on top of an elephant. And we just like started laughing as, as because it's like, it sounds weird. But we are like, you know what, let's just kneel it. So because of the video production prior experience that we had, we were like, you know what, let's just put four or five ideas uh, one by one and we're just going to keep the few of them. So we laid down the whole thing, we storyboarded the whole thing, we got the permits because, uh, again, at the end of the day, they're like animals. We sort of love them as well. So I was like, uh, let's just get the the safest thing, like the thing that is not going to harm anyone. So we actually ended up getting like a very cute elephant. She was like super supportive, everything. I know her since a while. Uh-huh. but uh, the guy who like the authorities that were supposed to help us they were like you know what you just have 15 minutes to shoot the whole thing and I was like damn so oh, really? we did all the elephant shots in just 15 minutes that's wild <laughs> literally <laughs> wow yeah but it came out great the end result was was pretty awesome i i really enjoyed the video i enjoyed the song too it's it's a good song to to work out to you know and then you said the guys from the house of protection reached out to you were you the oh, first choice when it came to filming the video or i think the credit goes to naimish he is a guy who like uh facilitated the whole thing he was a guy doing all the talks even at that point of time me and naimish were like fairly knew with each other we knew each other for a while but like we weren't like completely friends or like had a concrete project with each other so Namish was like hey you produce videos and these guys have reached out to me so uh, can you have a word with them so then the Red Bull guys came to the picture we sent them a bunch of pitch decks that this is the idea that we can nail like the whole coordination sort of thing okay and then they were like okay this sounds promising let's actually come over and do it how scary was it getting into the the circle of death Did you guys <laughs> feel safe the whole time or no shockingly you won't believe that too. but as soon as you get inside the circle uh like the adrenaline kicks in and all the fear like just like gets blocked out because uh-huh. you are so stimulated by the whole thing because it's extremely bizarre like you get inside the whole thing and we had a thing of like two drivers and two bike riders and one car driver so we thought they might like take turns we didn't know we didn't know that they all are gonna be in the well at the same time so i was like fine and when they started doing the whole thing i was like holy shit this is absolutely crazy and within like two minutes of the whole thing you get extremely stimulated as soon as the adrenaline kicks in you are like in a weird state of euphoria. You're like, I want to get this thing done. I want to get this thing done. I can imagine, dude, that's extremely dangerous. Like I got extremely anxious just watching it go down. And so I can't imagine the position you guys were in. That's crazy. Oh, <laughs> but Ross to the House of Protection guys as well, they handled it way more better than what I thought it would because uh-huh. uh, it was extremely hot that day, like super duper hot. And Eric and Stephen... And even Kevin Garcia, the guy who actually directed the whole thing, we got them Red Komodo Dragon, like the camera itself. And it was like completely ripped out to the T with all the lenses that they wanted. Yeah. So it's a pretty huge, heavy, super camera. And those guys were in there for like four or five hours, straight up, like ripping, ripping up. And you have seen like Eric and like Stephen play. They don't like play like this. They're like added. So, yeah. and they never stopped for like four hours. In between the takes, we were like asking them if we need anything. And they were like, no, we just want to get this thing done. Which was like a very smart decision on their part as well. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, you definitely don't want to be in there for too long. And where did you guys <laughs> have the cameras positioned? Because you don't really see them in the shots. Like, how many cameras were there? And, like, we're kind of more or less, how were they positioned? Uh, so, during the shoot itself, uh, the only guy, apart from the band, was in the pit was Kevin Garcia. And this another 
additional cameraman that we had like offered them. The rest of the people, the rest of the crew was literally on the top of the pit itself. So it's like a huge cylindrical sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And on the like outer circumference of the well itself, you can actually stand there, like the spectators go up there, buy a ticket, and just like yeah. they go up there. Like the audience, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. That makes sense. But yeah, very cool, man. Like we we really enjoyed the video, the the song, everything about it. So really good job on that. And it's blown up. So and I hope you guys blow yeah. up too. Fingers uh, crossed, man. We're yeah. starting up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what what are some of the other struggles that you guys have uh, come through as a up and coming band in you know your area? So like I said, uh, the live you can see here is pretty active because of the population itself, but it's completely a uh, different sort of music. So mm. in US, like the alternative music scene has like its own place inside pop culture. It might not be the mainstream, but it still has some sort of place where you can feel like you are like an outsider or uh, at least there's like some sort of spot there. In India, that basically is non-existent. So we are not trying to be a part of something where we don't have a choice but to like make it. Fortunately, bands like Bloody Wood, Sky Harbor, there's this another good band called Payanak Moth, uh, which you should try. They sort of have paved some sort of path for bands like us. Because they have been into the game since a while. Uh, except Bloody Wood, all the other bands, frankly, are not like going into the international zone as of now. And our current plan is to not just work on the audio, but also work on the visuals as well. Like you can see, <laughs> we have yeah. to make sure we introduce like some elements of masks, some elements of uh, visual aesthetics into the whole thing. Also, we're currently in the phase of making two or three more songs, which are going to be in the playful, tongue-in-cheek, not so serious vibe, as you can see in the Shutter Face Up video. And then we're going into, like, really good, well-crafted, like, something like Death of Peace of Mind by Bad Omens mixed with Linkin Park and uh, some of the elements, something like that. Cool, man. I'm looking forward to hearing it because you just listed off some of my favorite bands at, at the moment. So very excited to hear that stuff coming up. And when more or less do you think that and like a new single will come out? Oh, December end, man. Like we're targeting for like December end or like just after, after Christmas. Uh-huh. And that's going to be the one with uh, a lot more clean vocals than just straight up me rapping or screaming or something like that. That's more a core to the actual the actual band sound that we have crafted we're just like finishing it off right now like the courses are done everything is done and we produce mix master everything in house i've been doing it for other bands i was like you know what i'll just like do it for myself awesome time out. yeah so that's done we're shooting a video for that later this month or early next month we have the concept laid out as well we have to like up the video that we already made is so let's see how it goes. Sweet. I mean, speaking of Bloody Wood, what, what, I mean, what do you think of their success and what's going on with them? You know, like, what do you guys think of it? So they totally deserve it. And because I've seen them going at it since 2014 or 15, like that, the guitarist of their band, he is the guy who actually runs the show. He's like the main backbone of the band. Yeah. He's like what Ben Bruce was to asking Alexandria. So that guy, uh, has been my Facebook friend since like 2015. So we don't talk regularly, but I can see the milestones that he had. So back then they just used to post super funny metal cover videos of these pop songs and the Bollywood songs. So they would like pick up a Bollywood song and they would make it balls to the walls heavy, like crazy heavy. And we would just watch it for the meme value, uh, me and my few friends, and they wouldn't get any views back in the day and after a while they started focusing more on the originals and stuff like that and then they blew up so it wasn't like an overnight thing where we could look at and be like damn you know these guys got it easy it wasn't like that they had like a solid 10 year run nine year or whatever it was and then they got the success so we feel a bit more proud that okay they actually broke the ceiling in a good way and they actually earned it without any cheap thing and they literally got signed now they were completely independent as far as I know, until literally like two weeks ago, until they got signed to Fearless Records. Yeah, man, those guys are blowing it up. They're doing it right. I, I re we really like them here on the channel. And yeah, I totally agree. Well deserved. What are some of y'all's influences? Like I know you mentioned Bad Omens, Lincoln Park. Right now you mentioned Asking yeah. Alexandria. Like what what are some of y'all's main influences? Ah, uh, that's a tough question because I listen to a lot of pop. Songs like American Pop, like I, I literally loved the new Sabrina Carpenter record because it was like produced extremely fine. So I had this knack of liking catchy choruses 
So I'll take that part from that. And then I would ask uh, like a few friends around me that I trust. Uh, for example, Nemesh is definitely one of them. He has like a really good music taste as well. He, Nemesh, you can tell about your influences. Yes, I basically grew up listening to a lot of punk bands like Green Day, Blink-182 sort of. And the band that I was in, it was the same as Green Day and Blink-182. We used to write songs like just four chord progression and let's just make something fun out of it that that type of songs but yeah after exploring a lot i i am into more heavy sort of music right now but yeah i still do listen to a lot of old punk bands so it's like me still exploring a lot of heavy and at the same time sticking to the old song that i grew up listening to very cool man every band y'all have listed off i <laughs> i listen to myself i'm just like okay cool these guys have, have yeah but the newer stuff uh you are really gonna like i feel like lincoln park and i feel like bad omens you're really gonna like it so it wasn't something that we tried to emulate in our music yeah uh, but some songwriting clues like how they structure the songs where they put the breakdowns at the right spot the length of it stuff like that i i really like because it's just perfect like uh the choruses have the right length they have the right catchy notes and i, I was like okay this is something that i really have to listen to so if i ever if we ever get big and if we ever get to like a stage where we're like touring actively and if i'm gonna listen to that song over and over again i need to like that song in the first place yeah. so that's why we made sure we get the right influences in and write the music that we actually truly like. Very cool. And have you guys played any shows? You guys got any upcoming shows? Yeah, I think so. Towards the end of the year, I think so. Uh, but that's in the local circuit of India, uh, mm. the state that we live in. So during winters, that is the time when the show starts. Uh, sh- the show start to pop. Mm-hmm. And we have like four shows planned literally in the same proximity that we live in. But uh-huh. they are pretty decent shows. Like we, my previous band also had like a very good, strong uh, live circuit strength, and Nemesh's band also had like a proper, strong circuit contact sort of uh, ratio with each other. So we're gonna capitalize on that during this winter at least. So four are confirmed, but. We're going to post more soon on the Instagram or like Facebook. Dope. And what's the goal for the band? Like what's the all time vision you guys have? Uh, it might sound super like dreamy or something that would like shooting up way too high, but we at least want to tour for the bands, tour with the bands that we just like described. Like someday we want to reach a point where we're at least like supporting as of now, and we want to make sure that all the festivals that we love personally, like there's Downward Fest, there's Rock and Ring, there's all the huge festivals that you might be aware with, all the American mm-hmm. uh, festivals as well. We want to see your name, at least on the bill and not in the small fonts. Is the target as of now. I think any band, that's the aspiration, of, should be the aspiration of any band. Yeah. True for the big, the okay. big name. You you want Metallica because... opening up for you guys and not the other <laughs> way around. <laughs> I don't think so. That's going to be possible in the alternative universe as well. <laughs> yeah, Metallica is uh, tough, but it's 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 a goal worth imagining. <laughs> the place that we come from, even making the music that we make, is pretty crazy because it's so different from the music that we make and the culture that we are into that a lot of people from the West have sort of trouble comprehending that difference like i said we are not from the tier one city of india itself like you might have seen uh, a lot of things where a lot of people look down on like third world countries and shit like that like india and stuff like that so imagine like the top cities of india so are sort of looking down on the cities that were for coming from. so to break up from a place like this is going to be a challenge but we're making sure we're bringing the right guns to the war basically yeah man aim high and You'd be surprised where you can go if you work at it. But yeah, I, I think that's a good place to end off the interview. Guys, thank you so much for coming on. That was really insightful. Like, And, and I wish the best for you guys. Uh, again, good stuff on the new single. And the House of Protection stuff also came out really good. So thank you guys again. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for having us. It's been a pleasure. Uh, me and the rest of the team as well. Yeah, and where, where can they find you guys? Let them know. Shout yourselves out. It's super simple. Uh, it's L-O-R-D, Lord. H A I T on all platforms. We have the same username on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere. It's the same thing. So just look us up. Or you can follow us up there. And we'll be glad to bring you on the ride that we're going on. Sweet. All right, guys. We'll see y'all in the next one.